Hi everyone, I'm Ding Xiaohui from SMK St. Elizabeth. Today I'm going to talk about economy and political development of Sarawak. Before the arrival of Brook, Sarawak's economy was primarily self-sufficient. The communities of Sarawak relied on fishing and agriculture as a source of livelihood. Indigenous communities also engaged in trade by exchanging goods such as forest products or textiles. At that time, Sarawak was originally under the control of Sultanate of Brunei, but the actual governance was largely in the hands of local indigenous leaders. From 1841 to 1946, Brooke took over Sarawak. Malaysia first oil well was discovered by Shell on Canada Hill in Miri Sarawak. Also, Bau, a gold mining town, flourished into an important hive of economic activities. By 1928, export has increased to $53.3 million with oil accounting for a whooping 74%. For politics, Brooke had established a centralized government with a legislative council that included European and indigenous members. Brooke has also made efforts to protect indigenous rights. However, Brooke was not welcomed by everyone. In fact, many indigenous leaders such as Rindab weren't happy about their arrival and rose against the Brook. Sarawak was then occupied by Japanese for three years and one month. The Japanese occupation had brought significant hardships to the local. The Japanese Imperial Army took control of Sarawak, establishing a military administration which was strongly opposed by the local. In addition, a new currency was introduced in Sarawak, which had then led to inflation. In 1946, under the British administration, agriculture remained an important sector with a focus on rubber, pepper, and palm oil. By 1949, export has further exported to 166 million thread dollars, while minerals like oil, gold, and antimony continue to dominate at 67%. The British introduced a more centralized governance system with the appointment of a British governor. After the assassination of Duncan Stewart by Rosalie Dobby, political parties began to emerge, such as SUPP. On 22 July 1963, the first Supreme Council was formed with Stephen Colin Lincoln as the first Chief Minister of Strava. The state government had more authority in decision making. On 16 September 1963, Sarawak finally achieved full independence as a state in Malaysia. In the present, Sarawak's economy and politics reflect a dynamic and evolving landscape. Sarawak's economy is diverse. Natural resources continue to play a significant role with oil and gas, timber, Palm oil and agriculture contributing to the state's revenue. Today, Sarawak export has grown to ringgit Malaysia 133 billion in 2022. Sarawak's politics is characterized by multi party system with various political parties such as DAP, PKR. In conclusion, Sarawak's economy and political development has evolved significantly over time. The journey of Sarawak's economy and political development continues as the states strive for a more prosperous future. Thank you for listening.